Do you want to start woodworking but aren't sure where to begin? Well, you are in the right place. Today, I will be sharing five essential tools that will get you started on your first woodworking project. There are so many woodworking tools out there and so many videos on which one to choose. Choose the right one, pick this one, not that one. It starts to get confusing and overwhelming. So before you go out and spend a bunch of money on the latest and greatest tools that you don't need, start at the beginning, don't waste your money. And so stick with me to the end. We'll go over all of these five basic tools that don't cost a lot. So when my now 16 year old daughter was a baby, I built her a toy box using these five tools I'm gonna to go over with you today. And my now almost 10 year old daughter has that same toy box and it has held up this long. And uh, um, yeah, so this is why I think it's important just to start with the basics. And of course it depends on what project you want to build. It doesn't make sense for one person building an elaborate project to use the same tools as somebody else building, say, a toy box or some garden boxes. Uh, but if you want to get started, better start walking before you can crawl. Switch that. Walk before, crawl before you can walk. Walk before you can run. Start at the beginning. So our number one tool today is the drill. Um, there are so many out there, right? Um, you got the top of the line, you got your introductory, you got corded, you got uh, battery powered. So where do you begin? Well, you begin at the beginning. Uh, this corded drill was actually a hand-me-down for me. And this first Black & Decker, the first drill that I, or battery powered drill that I got, uh, was a gift. And this is the drill that I actually used when I built my daughter's toy box. And I built a lot of uh, projects with just these two drills here. So if you're just starting out and you don't have either one of them, let's say, you don't have corded, you don't have cordless, which one do you go? Which one do you go with? I would have to say just pick one that works best for you. If you can't afford something like a DeWalt, um, will a black and decker work? Absolutely. Like I said, I have, I use this one for a lot of different, uh, a lot of different projects and it has got me through. So number two on our list is a saw. So where do you begin? Don't have a table saw. I would not recommend starting with a table saw. That's just me. This is the one I started with, built my daughter's toy box, built a bunch of other projects with, um, as you can see, it has seen better days. This it has, this is basically just from a um, miter saw kit. Um, and this was actually also a hand-me-down. But again, you have a bunch of different saws. You've got a Japanese style saw, you've got an American style saw, you've got a coping saw or a circular saw. I've got it right back here. I've got a flush cut saw. Which one do you begin with? Um, my, my advice would be a saw like this. They can be a little pricey. I could put a link to the, the saw in the description below. Um, I do like this one because it has one side for rip cuts and then the other side for cross cuts. Um, this is a Japanese style saw, so it does cut with a pole as opposed to the American style saw, which cuts on the push. Um, I just, I really like this one. I use it a lot, even though I have lots of power tools. I've got lots of, you know, I've got my table saw and everything, I still will use this one quite a bit. If you're gonna be working on a project where you need little intricate cuts and everything like that, just spend a little bit of money. These are not very expensive. Just go out and get, get yourself a, a inexpensive coping saw. This will take place of a, a jigsaw if you don't wanna go uh, spend money on you know, 
a, a jigsaw that you're probably only going to use every once in a while, just go pick yourself up a coping saw. I do agree um, with I do agree with the uh, notion that you should be able to build with your uh, with hand tools before you start building with power tools. It just I think it teaches you a lot of skills and it gets you. I think it makes it a little bit more personal too. All right, number three, you might not consider an actual tool. Uh, I am though, is sandpaper. Now you've got a various variety of types of sandpaper. You got your sanding blocks, you got your actual paper, sanding pads. Um, I like to have obviously a variety of all of them. Um, the reason that I'm considering this considering sandpaper as one of the tools, you can actually replace some of the qualities or some of the purposes of tools with sandpaper. So let's say instead of rounding a corner, uh, you just want to get the get just the sharp edge off. You're making a garden boxes or something like that. You don't need to round over the edge, but you really just kind of want to shape it a little bit. Your sandpaper is going to be able to do that or sanding block or whatever. I mean, nobody's going to be catching themselves on that. It doesn't take much. Just get a uh, thicker grit, uh, medium or heavy grit, or, you know, you got like a, this is really fine, but get yourself a 60, 80 grit paper to rough up the, to smooth out those edges. And... And take down some edges pretty quickly with that. If you are going to be doing a lot of material and want to upgrade a little bit, get I would recommend getting yourself a nice uh, random orbit sander. Do yourself a favor, just go ahead and spend a little bit of extra money. Don't don't go out and buy the the Harbor Freight one, even though I have a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. Um, if you spend a little bit of extra money on say a higher quality this is a uh, dewalt you run you decrease your risk of um, finding swirl marks or something on your project which if you're using a, a rougher grit paper and you end up getting some swirl marks on there and it's going to be a pain in the butt to get them out especially if you're working on something that uh, you want it to look a little bit nicer otherwise just go right to the hand powered um, i've really I really like these uh, sanding pads. Um, you can, if you're working on something with a little curvature, let's say, uh, you can get just a thin piece of wood and a little, you know, adhesive or some double-sided tape and put this on your wood and you can use that to, you know, curve. Or, like I said, I just like these sanding pads. They're pretty versatile. Um, I will also just lay the pad down like this if I'm working on something small. So I'll measure thrice, cut once. Um, number four on our list is a measuring tool. Um, I'm going to combine this with, I'm not counting it as a tool. I'm going to count it as a more of an accessory is a, a flat a straight edge. Now you can use almost anything as a straight edge that has a straight edge. You can use an old piece of plywood uh, that you've cut from something or even a new piece of plywood. I don't know. Um, I do like the idea of having a measuring device and a straight edge. Um, yeah, if you're going to have those in the same tool, um, whether you're going to be cutting anything at an angle or um, just straight edges, Whatever works for your project, right? But um, I do a lot of measuring, a lot of measuring with a measuring tape. Um, this sometimes is my, I would say often, is my only uh, measuring device. Clamps, clamps everywhere. So which one do you use? Um, that's going to be our fifth and final tool that I'm going to recommend is essential to um, 
to woodworking projects. If you watch any woodworking video, um, they ha people have so many clamps. You got clamps hanging up all over in their workshop. So which one do you use? Which one do you start with? Um, and which ones do you avoid? Once again, I don't want to knock on Harbor Freight because there are a lot of um, a lot of good tools that you can get without spending a whole bunch of money. Um, this is I, I do have a lot of uh, I, I do have several Harbor Freight clamps. Um, they don't hold as well. Uh, I've got I've had a few of them that I have had to toss out because they just won't hold on to anything to for for anything. So let's, let's say you're just starting out on a project. Uh, you're just starting woodworking and you're trying to build a toy box or you're trying to build some garden boxes. Um, believe it or not, this is gonna be my recommendation. Um, just, you know, some grip strength and a simple clamp. Um, the reason I'm picking this is because it is quick to, to move around. Um, you don't have to sit there and mess around with it. They're generally inexpensive. And they, they do hold pretty well. Now you can get yourself some good heavy duty C clamps. Um, problem with these is if you clamp them too tight, you're going to start leaving, um, you're going to start leaving marks on your projects. Do yourself a favor, put some calls, just a piece of wood um, in between those to hold your piece together. Uh, these will do a very good job. Just some basic, um, just holding some pieces together. Then you can start upgrading. I really do like the F-style clamps. Um, I, they, they all have their purposes. Um, once you start really getting into everything, uh, you're making something more uh, flat that you're gluing everything together. You're going to start using some, you're going to start using a vi variety of different clamps. If you watched my videos before, I'll have a series of, uh, you know, two or three different styles of clamps on there. I'll throw the whole, the whole mess of them at, uh, at a project and it just depends on what you're doing, what you're working with. So along the list of accessories that I feel like I have to mention in the video, um, hearing protection, I am going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, I can't stand the sound of sandpaper. Uh, and I will, if I'm using sandpaper, I will often put, a, uh, some ear, I, I will often put some hearing protection on um, just because I can't stand. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I don't, I, it's weird. I know as a woodworker to, to say that, but I can't stand that sound. Um, so yes, I will, I will use those even if I'm using just hand sandpaper. Um, well, anyway, either latex gloves, nitrile gloves, um, said it before if you're using hand tool or if you're using power tools don't wear gloves of any type these are more likely to um you know tear instead of pulling your hand into a table saw however there's no reason to have even gloves like this on when you're just when you're using power tools um, just save your save your digits save your fingers and uh yeah don't wear them but Absolutely for finishing and um, yeah, for finishing, you're going to want these if you're uh, using epoxy or anything like that, you don't want to have to go and, uh, you know, have your fingers unstuck from each other. And speaking of finish, um, I've got my dust masks here. So if you're sanding, you can get away with just a, say an N95 or N95 would probably even be okay for a, a water-based finish or something. The, this is what I'll use for sanding most of the time. It's just this 3M dust mask. Um, I do have P100 uh, filters on here. 
So if you are using any oil-based finishes or stains, N95, so anything with an N rating is not going to be appropriate for an oil-based uh, finish or stain. You're going to want to switch to a P, P100, um, these little pink uh, filters. What I, what I'll do is if I'm using, if I'm doing finish, I just switch right to the cartridges. Um, no matter what finish I'm using uh, or stain, I'll just switch right to the cartridge. Um, the P100 uh, pink filters, I'll save for uh, for dust particles. And I do actually swap them back and forth. I don't use two different masks. I'll swap this out. Um, I have, this is a smaller one for the kiddos and then the larger ones for me. So when the you know, kids are coming down, helping out with a project, um, I use a large um, and I give them the medium. Medium works well. Just keep them nice and clean. All right, so there you go. Drill, saw, sandpaper, measuring device, and clamps. The important thing is to just get started. Don't try and wait for everything to be perfect or try and get all the, all the high fancy new tools. Um, we can even replace this one with that one. You don't need all the, the fancy tools, you just need to get started. And um, yeah, so if you're ready to start woodworking, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe. We're gonna be doing some more videos. Check out all the other videos that I have. Yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see for some future projects. And we will, uh, I'll do whatever I can to accommodate any requests. Thank you for watching and go out, grab some, grab some tools and, and get started. See what your first project is. If it's going to be something big or small and yeah, let me know what you're, uh, what you decided to make or what projects or anything. Let me know. And I will see, you see you in the next video. Well, you are in the right place because today I'm going to be loving my words. You should be. I built her a toolbox with these tools I'm going to go over with you today. And now my almost 10 year old daughter is still using that same toy box. I think I said toolbox, didn't I? I'm pretty sure I said toolbox. Okay. So it has stuck around that long and I'm going to, sh yeah. So my now 16 year old daughter went, and it's a versatile, to, versatile, versatile tool to use.